Hey guys, Ed Budd here, and welcome to a new feature on the channel where I'm going to be answering the questions from the viewers. I'll try and do one of these perhaps every month, maybe every few weeks. Questions seem to be coming in like a torrent of water at the moment, uh, like we've had recently over in the UK. There's been storms here, wind, it's been crazy. So North Wales Runner asks via Instagram about cleaning his Pegasus 36. I think he's taken them out and perhaps they've started to get a little bit tarnished already. I was quite lucky with my Pegasus 36 when I managed to get these back in June of last year. They were mainly used uh, through the test period in very dry conditions and thus they look kind of pretty pristine actually. Only really the toe box has got a sort of bit of darkening to it from sort of dirt and grime from the road. So my favoured method for cleaning a shoe such as the Pegasus 36 would be firstly to make sure you pack the toe box area of the shoe with some kitchen towel. That's stuff that's really, really absorbent. Take those laces out as well. We'll be dealing with those in a moment. I use a very soft brush and firstly clean off, first very gently, gentle sort of strokes, just cleaning off some of the mud, some of the debris that might be on the upper. That's the bit that's gonna get tarnished first really. So you wanna try and get off as much as you can from the upper. Next thing I do is actually look at the outsole. And um, quite often you get sort of little stones, sticks and twigs and things that get trapped between the teeth of the outsole. I find a very small set of jeweler's screwdrivers can be particularly useful for that task. But be very careful not to damage that soft, pillowy midsole foam. Grab yourself an old beaker or something and fill it up with some cold water and I tend to put a little dash of fairy liquid dish soap and with that brush just very gently work through the toe box area. That's the bit that's gonna get quite wet, so hence why packing it. I find using an old cloth or something is easiest to try and clean the midsole off. Again, you can use that brush, perhaps use the other end of the brush. Be careful not to transmit more uh, kind of dirty water and foam onto the upper. You don't want to just shift around that sort of dirt and discoloration really to the rest of the shoe. So kind of use the, the brush in a kind of this sort of motion getting as much off as you can. You'll find that towel will absorb quite a lot of moisture, but a lot of dirt as well. It will kind of come through the upper. That's especially prevalent when you look at cleaning a Flyknit based shoe, like the 4% or maybe the Zoomfly Flyknit. A careful rinse of the outsole and the midsole should remove any more debris and dirt. Those soapy suds will slide off and you'll be left with a shining shoe. Just remember when you're cleaning those uppers, we want no disintegrations. So C's is, I'll place it up on the screen, I think that's how it's pronounced, over on Instagram, has asked me how does the Infinity Run from Nike pair up against the Adidas Ultra Boost 20? I better find those shoes, I'm not sure where they are. I think the Ultra Boost 20 is under there somewhere, I'm not going to grab that just right now. Need to use the last technique on this Infinity Run. As you can see, the toe box area is very discoloured. Kind of shows the love though of the shoe, how much I've used it, how much I've enjoyed it. So I find the Infinity Run somewhat lighter of a shoe than the Ultra Boost 20. It's a little bit more flexible in the upper and I find that upper material slightly more forgiving on the foot. It just feels softer to me and that lack of that lacing kind of cage around the midfoot area really is beneficial to me. It's just vastly more desirable on foot. It feels a lot better. I also find the Infinity Run a more balanced shoe in terms of the midsole foam. I think the heel to toe drops a bit less noticeable. I think it's a eight mil drop in this shoe. The Ultra Boost is like a 10 mil drop. It just feels even more than that though. There's so much boost material in the heel of the shoe. You kind of feel like you're falling forwards, but not in a good way. The Infinity Run's a little cheaper than the Ultra Boost 20, certainly. I really find it odd that they put that shoe at such a premium price point, £160 is a lot of money. This one's a little bit cheaper, I think they're around about 135 something like that. You can probably find them a little cheaper if you've got some sort of discount code knocking around. But it's just a lot more versatile as well. I managed to clock up some paces towards 7 minutes per mile, but they also felt great when I was running easy, kind of 8 minutes 30 per mile. So you can probably use it for a more varied type of training activity. I think the outsole patterns on both shoes will provide you with loads and loads of wear. I can't see them wearing out over sort of three, 400 miles. There's a considerable amount of rubber on both shoes, quite aggressive patterns. So in answer to your question, I'd probably reach for the Infinity Run every time over the Ultra Boost 20. I just think it's a way better shoe, better construction, better fit, and it just generally feels a lot nicer on foot far more versatile. Hi to Lee Leggett, 
He's an avid runner and viewer of the channel. I think he also follows me on Strava as well. I noticed he's actually a sub 130 half marathoner, so well done, Lee. He asked me on Instagram about the longevity of Zumex based shoes. So we're talking 4%, we're talking the next percent. He's really interested about the performance degradation over miles. So I'm going to explore that a little bit today. Fortunately, I have several Zumex based shoes in various different states of decay. So here are some I made earlier. So here I've got my Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. They're close to about 180 miles of use now. I've kind of retired them from active service now. They just started to feel, well, they still feel fine. I wouldn't use them for racing, but it's only for a tempo run, something like that, they'd be absolutely fine. You can see the outside coating of the Z-Max material has started to wear away here and kind of degrade a little bit. The rest of the shoes looking great though. The rubber section here, no problems whatsoever. A bit of debris kind of caught in here. I should clean them off really. But there's very little wear here on the rubber section in the forefoot. More considerable wear is around this area here. But in fairness, I think it's mainly cosmetic. That side, I do think when some of the kind of outer coating of the Zumax wears away and the exposed foam is there, I think if moisture does get to it, it does start to kind of almost kind of make it feel brittle. It's a little bit like the feeling from touching that kind of flower arranging foam. I think they call them oasis. Got images of Noel Gallagher and Liam Gallagher fighting each other now. With only 60 miles on the Gakuso Vaporfly 4%, you can see actually on the outsole, there's a little bit of wear here. Perhaps we've got a little bit sloppy on landing, but the rest of the shoe is actually fine. But the foam itself feels quite different. As you kind of push the foam in, it does feel quite different. It feels a lot harder in the shoes that have done the additional miles. Yeah, so I mean, those have done about three times the work of these. Um, certainly these feel quite different. I always found the first thing to go with the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit was those kind of hexagonal sections at the back of the shoe here. These were always the pieces that started to look like they were gonna fall out, actually. I know some runners had that happen. I've not seen it myself with my own eyes. So I think you could say I'd probably raced in those up to about 150 miles. I think that's probably round about the time I would consider retiring them from that purpose. They still feel great though. There's no problem using these for some interval stuff or some tempo runs. The foam's still gonna be fine. I think if you use them in very dry conditions, you're probably gonna get even more out of them. But I think once that Zumex foam starts to get very, very wet, moisture starts to get in there, I think it does do something to it. It doesn't feel quite as cushioned as it did before. I think you'll still get that snap from this shoe when I'm kind of pushing off. The cushioning still has that kind of malleable feel, that's still there. It just feels somewhat fresher, certainly, than the 4% Flyknit with 180 miles on it. Now, I've got these next percent in a size 11 with 70 miles on the clock. Apart from a little bit of creasing in the midsole, if we look on the outside, I mean, it's vastly different. I wonder if the formula is very slightly different. Have they made changes to the foam? I don't know. There's some kind of crinkling here, but in no way is it anywhere near as bad as the 4% Flyknit or the Gakuso version. This pair look great. There's very little aesthetic wear whatsoever on them. The rubber's doing brilliantly underfoot. It just doesn't look far off new, really. There's a couple of little areas where some rocks got embedded in there and I had to remove them. There's no wear on these rubber sections here at the back of the shoe. So there's loads of snap there. They still feel responsive, still feel ridiculously cushioned. I have to say that probably that's a sign that the next percent holds up better than the 4% Flyknit. Certainly a much more durable version of the Zumex midsole. And those rubber traction areas in the heel certainly are a big, big improvement over the outsole on the 4%. They seem to be doing a really great job at preventing any sort of damage to the foam at the rear of the shoe. Hope that answers your question, Lee. So on to a question related to the Tempo Next Percent that's recently been released by Nike. Ivan Leong, hope I pronounced that correctly, over on YouTube, Ask me whether I think that the Tempo Next Percent is gonna supersede the Zoom Fly. Oh, whenever I get this shoe out, just good memories, you know? Really good memories for wearing this shoe. I can't personally see Nike keeping the Zoom Fly series going now with the introduction of the Tempo Next Percent. That Zoom Fly was always kind of like a sister shoe to the Vaporfly 4%. You had that 4% and then you had the 4% Fly Knit they kind of always had that kind of sister or sort of cousin shoe alongside of it that you could use for training. I mean, there are similarities here, obviously, 
but there are great differences in terms of the midsole foam. Carbon plate was the same apparently, but this one's so much heavier. In the new iteration of the shoe, there's apparently Zoom X in the forefoot and part of the midfoot area, certainly round where you've got those AirPods. And then it's gonna be React, as in the old Zoom Fly, flying it back in the heel to provide that sort of cushioning and that kind of protection for the runner. My big worry about that shoe is there's gonna be an imbalance between the heel and the forefoot area. React is quite a bit denser than Zoom X. It's just so light, that foam. I hope with the addition of those Zoom AirPods in the front, they kind of add a bit of weight and kind of balance things out. Otherwise, I feel we're gonna end up with a shoe that's just really, really sort of heel, sort of bottom heavy. I think obviously as more information comes out on that shoe, we'll get a better picture as to exactly what it's gonna be like. Let's hope it's an improvement over the Zoom Fly 3, which I didn't really enjoy that much. Put those cookies down. Thanks for sending your questions. Keep them coming. Also, thanks to all of you who've recently subscribed. We're going through the reef at the moment in terms of subscribers. Make sure we enter the running shoe giveaway competition. There'll be a link in the cards at the end of the video so you can watch and enter. Quick music update though. I've been listening to Bo Diddley recently. I love Bo Diddley. His album Bo Diddley's Beach Party amongst one of my favourite rock and roll albums of all time. I can't wait till the summer comes around and I can put Bo Diddley's Beach Party on and go running. It's a really great experience. It just makes me feel so good. This has been my current listening. Bo Diddley is a gunslinger on the Checker label. It comes on ridiculously thick vinyl and it just sounds fantastic. Bo Diddley's got such a rhythmic sound. It's really, really useful for runners. One of my favourite songs of his, uh, Cadillac, is on here. Really great tune. Loads of great use of tremolo on some of Bo Diddley's tracks. And I believe the Smiths track, How Soon Is Now, was heavily influenced by Bo Diddley. I sadly never got to see him play live. He was playing at the Cheese and Grain in Froome, uh, but sadly became very ill and was unable to play. Uh, it's one of my real regrets, really, never seeing him play live. Rest in peace, Bo. That's all for me for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this new video format on the channel. Please make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and share with your friends. My name's Ed Bird, and I'll be seeing you.